ourselves. So I will. Awesome. Awesome. We're live. So it's super cool. I have donned myself as books for this show, uh, authors interviewing authors. I think it's super cool. And today we have with us Tracy Baptiste. Did I say it correctly? Uh, Baptiste. The P Baptiste. is silent. Oh, very nice. Um, and we're here today to talk about your latest book. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so uh, my latest book is Mermaid and Pirate. There it is, uh, featuring a black mermaid, black pirate, a lot of shenanigans, a lot of fun. Um, so Mermaid and Pirate really is a story about these two characters. They both love the sea and they love storms. And one day a storm kind of blows the two of them into each other which is not so great because uh, mermaid winds up in pirates nets and they gotta, you know, her hair gets caught in there. You know what I'm talking about. And so he's got to get her out. Um, but they very quickly uh, realize that even though they don't speak the same language, mermaid of course speaks mermaid in a lot of glove and blub and blubbity and pirate speaks pirate, a lot of arg and lob and things like that. Um, they learn how to communicate by being kind to each other and they find themselves in one scrape after the next, but they keep trying to help each other as the story goes along. And then when they have to kind of go their separate ways, they kind of miss each other because now they, they have this friend on the sea that they, they miss seeing. So that's, that's basically Mermaid and Pirate in a nutshell. Oh yeah, it is a very, very super cute story. I was able to read it to my children and a couple of their friends. Um, I had my kids do the, the sound effects. I'm like, what does a pirate say? <laughs> and then uh, my youngest is six, so he's learning to read. So I'm like, hey, what, is the, what does the mermaid say? Um, one of the things that I love that all of the children said, it's, it's a group of boys. So reading for four boys, right? I'm like, well, what do you notice? And all of them said, he looks like me. Can you tell me why? I mean, as a mother of two boys, it is very important for me for representation, but as an author, what, what drove you to make this book this way? Well, you know, um, back in 2019, when Disney announced that they were casting Halle Bailey in the role of Ariel for The Little Mermaid, there was a lot of discussion about this idea of a Black mermaid, and people were so surprised uh, at the idea that a mermaid could be Black. And there were a lot of people who pointed to my work. Um, I have a book called The Jumbies, The Jumbies Series. The second book in that series, Rise of the Jumbies, has Black mermaids in it. Mm. And I have grown up, um, you know, growing up in Trinidad, in the Caribbean, you know, I grew up on Caribbean folk tales and West African folk tales. And I always knew that mermaids could look like anything, but I especially thought that mermaids looked like me and like other people from my family because we spent every weekend out on the beach swimming and so for me it does not it did not seem like such an extraordinary thing that mermaids could be black um and so when people pointed to this work that i had done a couple of years prior uh i quickly realized that what was happening the disconnect there was that people did not know that there were other stories that included black mermaids so I wrote an op-ed for the New York Times called Mermaids Have Always Been Black that talks about mermaids from all of these other cultures. So the very first example of a mermaid that we see in world history is from South Africa. It is in cave paintings. So we're talking about millennia ago. So there are these um, black mermaids on these cave paintings in South Africa. There are stone carvings of mermaids in Persia. And then there's stories about mermaids in from ancient cultures from all over the world, from, from India, from China, from Japan, uh, the Maori people of New Zealand, um, South America, uh, the Inuit people in North America. There's, you know, all of these stories. And my editor um, asked me if I would write a Black mermaid story because you know, there just was a dearth of them in um, in literature. 
And so I was happy to do it. So I, I decided I would take on this idea of um, of black mermaids and you know, what is a thing that a black mermaid's gonna be concerned about? Probably be gonna be concerned about keeping her hair neat under the water. So that was the very first thing, the very first idea that I came to as I was creating the story. Oh my God, I absolutely love all the history. Um, as an avid fitness and dancer, I learn a lot more about the stories of our culture. And you're right, there is like this gap or misunderstanding or miscommunication that there are so many similarities amongst stories. Um, I noticed that you made Ariel all gold, which really reminds me of Oshun, which is uh, in the goddess of, of water. So can we talk about the illustrations? Why the colors? Why the everything? It's very, very beautiful, but I love to understand what the message that we're trying to put across. Well, uh, you cannot thank me for the illustrations. Liesl Adams is the illustrator of Mermaid and Pirate. Mm. And it was her idea to have um, Mermaid have this beautiful gold tail um, when she was creating it. And I also did notice that I, I don't know if she was going specifically for Oshun, but I 100% noticed that pretty much right away. Right. So here she is. She's got this beautiful gold tail. And, um, you know, she is just swimming about in the ocean. She's got this sea anemone in her hair. I mean, the character design is really just absolutely stunning. It's but so what, beautiful. But what Liesl also does is a lot of mermaid and pirates communication has to be nonverbal. They don't speak the same language. So they have to find ways to express what they need to express to each other without using their words. And so Liesl finds ways to do body positioning and facial um, expressions that really express what the two of them are trying to communicate to each other in such a beautiful and brilliant way. And then she adds this gorgeous background, these blues and these greens and, you know, the the coral that she adds into the story. Like, it's just so stunning. Um, all of the color that she adds in, all of the details that she adds in. Um, there's this little crab that I'm like absolutely in love with in the story that like shows up like, you know, here's Pirate trying to bury its treasure in the coral. And uh, she did such an absolutely amazing job with the colors and the, the textures that she adds into the story. It is a gorgeous book to page through. It is. It's absolutely phenomenal. And so, again, I have young kids, so we're teaching them how to read. And one of the things that I learned in from my youngest first grade teacher is that before you ask them to read the words, you ask them to look at the picture and tell you what they think is happening. So for them, right, and I love how it's kind of like both one side and one side, right? The first couple of pages, you've got, uh, I want to call her Ariel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got her on one side loving the storm, and then subsequently he's on the next page loving the same exact storm. So you're watching how two different worlds are like intertwining at the same time for the same reason, but different purposes. I absolutely, and my kids were able to get those connections just by the way that it was illustrated. I like that you've included body language because again, as this is a children's book, there are a lot of subtle nuances that right. we don't catch yeah. as adults that children do catch. And they, the crab is one of them. <laughs> my oldest I think he was like oh look mom it's Sebastian I was like oh yeah that makes sense so I absolutely <laughs> love the 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 homage to uh not necessarily Disney but because that's what people will think of and it's a it's a way to again bring us back to ourselves it reminded me very much so of um the morals and values that we would get from perhaps Aesop's fables, because like you said, you're teaching how to be kind through empathy. Uh, my favorite part is when she's underwater with the mast and the guy, the other ship comes up and he's like, oh, hey, is that a mermaid? 
we already know that this is going to be bad news, right? Because they're fiction, they're they're creatures. They we don't know what's going on with them. That is just not something that we do. We don't allow all humans to interact. There's a reason, and the pirate was smart enough to be like, oh. You don't see anything. It's fine. that's right. Nothing to see like, here, guys. <laughs> just moving along. <laughs> just keep going like there's nothing. There's nothing under the water. Just focus on helping me, sir. I thought that was so brave, so um, ingenious. Like there again, the subtle nuances that we're showing in terms of protection. One of brown people for each other. Right. Right. right a man and a woman, or a boy and a girl, depending on how you look at the characters. It's just the symbolism is, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you so much. You know, um, you know that is one of the things I, I feel like very few people sort of pick up on, this idea that, you know, they're really trying to protect each other. Like, he protects it. He's under the water. Like, she tries to warn him. Um, he doesn't understand her, so, you know, he gets right. into trouble and he mostly helps to him out. And well, um, he immediately helps her, really looking out for each other immediately um, without being asked, without being asked to look out for each other. They're just like automatically in that protective mode of making sure the other one's okay. Right. And that part, again, being able to show that, especially at such a young age, especially, again, I love books, which is why the name. <laughs> um it is the quickest and easiest way to translate that message to children and therefore the parents reading that book. Um, can you tell me more about the language that you chose to use because of this? Again, I think it it is a phenomenal connector for adults and children because it's so simple, but it's in its simplicity, it's so grand. Uh, yeah, so one of the things I had a lot of fun with was coming up with language for mermaid and pirate. When when you ask kids, what does a pirate say? They immediately go to arg, right? But when you ask a kid what a mermaid says, like, that's a harder, they don't know what mermaids say because we haven't really given mermaids any language. So I was able to invent language for mermaid and you might notice throughout the story like mermaid really has way more language than pirate does um she says a lot more she has a lot more nuance in her language there's a lot more things that she can say and um you know as the story goes on and you hear mermaid speaking and you hear pirate speaking and my hope is that you know, both kids and their caregivers as they're reading the story will be able to like really get into the role play of talking like pirate and talking like mermaid. Um, but as they're getting towards the end of the story, they start picking up a little bit of each other's language. So that very last word that the two of them say um, is the two of them saying it together. And it's a little, it's a, com a combination of both of their languages. That's absolutely phenomenal. Like, I love it. Um, again, we've got representation, we've got understanding language, meaning, especially from, again, a teacher, mother aspect, understanding language is, is huge for me because our kids don't know how to speak. We must teach them how to speak. Right. And there's that pivotal time where they do. They sound like mermaid and pirate. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just making these weird noises and you have to interpret as their caregiver what they're trying to say to you so that you can communicate fully and you have represented this again in so many different ways shapes and form it's a parent child relationship it's a brother sister relationship it's a friend friend relationship it could be a romantic relationship if you do another book i don't know <laughs> but it's 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 so beautiful um, and then again, the illustration, how do you feel working with another woman of color on such a pivotal book, especially with he uh, our Ariel being black this year? Oh, you know, that was something that I think we all decided very early on that we wanted to have another black female creator as the illustrator for this particular book. So, um, you know, when my editor asked me to write a, you know, black mermaid story 
I think she already had maybe a few illustrators in mind. And mm -hmm. I think when uh, Lisa Adams came across um, the desk of the, the art director, they were like, oh, absolutely, this, this is the person to go with. Um, and it was such a perfect choice because Liesl was able to convey every emotion in such a vivid way, but also it seems really effortless, right? Like it feels like it just flows naturally. Like there's no possible way that they could have um, done it any differently. Like it all seems so effortless, but I know she did just such hard work to get the book to look the way that it does. You know, like her thinking about the body positioning, the, um, you know, like the angle of their hands, their, you know, their, their, you know, like whether they're squinting their eyes or, you know, like pursing their lips, like she's really Ooh. thinking about how to convey meaning in absolutely everything. And like, as you said, like even in the colors that she chose for, for like the little crabs and the coral and everything, like these are all choices that she is making to convey um, something specific. And, you know, I was working so hard in the language to convey all of these different themes, but also to, um, to invent language um, that kind of you know, push the idea of what these two characters could do. And so matching up with an illustrator who was also doing that same level of work to bring this story to um, its, you know, absolute best conclusion was right. a complete joy. And I could not be happier with the pairing. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, I mean, so I'm ready for you guys to turn it into like a live action cartoon because I want to see her move. I want to see her locks. Question, why locks? I mean, I have my own theories, um, but why did you choose? Is that something that you conversed and said, hey, locks versus in the Afro or is that just- No, so funny enough, Liesl was the one who came up with the locks but I happened to see an early sketch of hers. And so she is on Instagram and she shared on Instagram that one of her initial ideas was having Mermaid have an Afro. And I mean, so there are sketches out there with um, Mermaid with a, a different version of Mermaid with an Afro. And it is, I mean, it's awesome. But I mean, I am kind of glad that she went with the locks eventually because as a, a kid who grew up, like, you know, going to the ocean and swimming, like, I know how hard it is to, like, comb your hair out <laughs> after you've been swimming in the ocean for a while. Um, so I am kind of glad that she went with the locks after right. all. It makes a whole lot more sense. Logically, like, I love that she was like, oh, a mermaid is probably going to want to keep her hair straight. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. I, I wear braids. I have locks. If I'm going in the water, I just... I don't mind being in the water, but I don't want to have to deal with the after effects. Right. And being yeah. that she's in the water all the time, I don't know how, like, then I would start to question how the fro is is staying in put. Uh, right. Oh, That's exactly. No. There's there's Liesl right there with um, so Holman, awesome. Mermaid, and Pirate. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, I mean, she did just such an absolutely amazing, amazing job coming up with the concept art for for all of the characters really in the story you know she's got mermaid she's got pirate she's got the other captain um like you know and the the other captain too looks very much like um like an indigenous person in yeah. the caribbean which i thought was such a smart choice that she made there and that was not something that i had thought of certainly you know i was just like yeah mermaid yeah pirate you know whatever mm -hmm. But yep, she came up with this idea that, you know, he would look like an indigenous person. I was just like, you knocked it out the park for sure. And I absolutely, absolutely love that. So being asked to write this story at this time, how did you keep your wits about yourself? Like me talking to you, loving Disney and mermaids, and I'm so excited that all of my favorite princesses now look like me, that... I could barely contain myself. So how did you focus and kind of like 
put this together and then also keep it so concise because there's so much to say and do, but it's a kid's book. So, you know, you only need a few pages to really start and get them because their attention spans not going right, to be right. long. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people think that writing picture books is easy and simple because they are only a few words, you know, a couple hundred words. But you have to be so precise with your language when you're writing picture books because you don't have a lot of words and you still have to convey all of that meaning, you know, all of that um you know, emotion and all of the themes and everything. You have to convey all of these ideas with very, very few words. So um, your words have to be precise and they have to say a lot. They have to say more than they appear to say, you know, like you're putting you're putting words together um, that like kind of um, suggest a bigger um, idea in the aggregate than the words seem to say just on their own. And that's right where it really is. Um, you have to be able to say a lot with, with very, very little. I, for me, I think that picture book writing is the hardest kind of writing that there is because it requires a very, very high level of skill. At my six-year-old, he's working on writing his first series of picture books. And I'm like, okay, so if we take the pictures, then what do you want to say? <laughs> because I'm long-winded, you know, college educated. We have so many words to say, but you're right. Making it concise and straight to the point. It's like a Twitter account for a book. You are, you right. are phenomenal in what you do. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the other works that you have that kind of led up to this? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I've written a lot of novels. Um, I also have written um, several other picture books, but I think the book that leads most directly into Mermaid and Pirate be started reading fantasy characters. Um, and, you know, I was really getting into the fantasy characters from the Caribbean where I grew up and just getting very much into, you know, what these characters would look like, what they would do, and these um, really kind of action scenes that I love to write. Um, so that is what led directly into me, you know, coming to writing Mermaid and Pirate where they are having like, kind of like adventure and hijinks on the high seas. Super cool. Now for the viewers, uh, where can we support you outside of Amazon? Not to say that Amazon is bad, but in, in the spirit of uh, empowerment, like the empowerment bookstore and supporting our people, where can we go that may be a empowered bookstore or, you know, a local person that we can support and therefore help build the community? Sure. So uh, Mermaid and Pirate and all of my books really are available at any bookseller, any brick and mortar bookseller. So you are free to go to um, your neighborhood bookseller, um, you know, go to black booksellers. They will have these books. And you can, of course, find uh, find me online um, at any bookstore. Um, and you can go to my website. My website will also take you to um, to places like IndieBound, which will have um, you know, which will have the book, and gives the money to local indies. So uh, my website is tracybatiste.com, and you can find all my books there. It, thank you so much. It has been so wonderful getting a chance to speak with you and talk about one of my favorite topics. Um, thank you again for all your works. Um, if there are any closing words now, I'll give you the floor and then I'll sign off. Okay. Well, you know, I really hope that you're going to enjoy all of the args and globbies in Mermaid and Pirate. And it is out now, available right now for you to enjoy with your kids. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Tracy. Again, I am Books, aka Fit Goddess, here on the Empowerment Bookstore with this wonderful and phenomenal author. Tracy, uh, we've had a phenomenal time conversing with you. I can't wait. I hope we get to speak again on one of your other topics because, again, 
the African icons. When I went to look at the books, that is the one that stood out to me the most. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And Aesop is in there since you mentioned him already. Oh, very nice. Well, it has been such a pleasure. I can't wait to talk to you again. And again, remember to support your local artists and your local bookstores and your local libraries. <laughs> Indeed. Well, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.